Calcific tendinitis of the rotator cuff is a common painful shoulder pathology due to uh, deposition of uh, calcium hydroxyapatite crystals inside the tendon uh, substance. 50% of the cases are symptomatic aged between 30 to 60 years and most of the cases are females. The most commonly affected tendon is the uh, supraspinatus tendon representing 80% of the cases. The second most common is the infraspinatus. Bursal side is usually more affected than the articular side. Most of the calcification occur within the critical zone of the tendon, which is about one centimeter above the insertion of uh, the greater tuberosity. This is due to its poor vascularity. The etiology of calcific tendinitis is still unknown, but the most common accepted hypothesis is hypoxia of the critical area or the critical zone, followed by fibrocartilaginous metabolism, which is eventually calcified after that. There are three main phases of calcific tendinitis. The pre-calcific phase, which has no pain, which is the phase of fibrocartilaginous metaplasia. Then the calcium deposition started to occur in the formative phase, in the resting phase. Then the most painful phase is the resorptive phase, which may last for three to six months. Then the pain decrease in the post-calcific uh, uh, phase. So most of the cases are self-limited. However, some of the patients have chronic uh, disease uh, with persistent symptom and poor quality of life. Usually they have night pain with stiffness and limitation of range of motion. The treatment, 90% of the cases represent, uh, do well with conservative therapy, rest, non-steroidal, physical therapy, corticosteroid injection, shock wave, and uh, needle barbotage of the calcific area. And the arthroscopic excision is only indicated when conservative treatment is unsuccessful for six months. Most of the people in the literature reported arthroscopic excision of the supraspinatus. We reported our technique in the arthroscopy techniques uh, about arthroscopic excision of the infraspinatus calcific tendinitis and our uh, defect management uh, technique. This is a case with the right shoulder, a uh, large isolated calcific deposit in the infraspinatus with persistent night pain and failed conservative treatment and steroid injection. We operated all the cases in the beach chair position under general anesthesia with interscalene block for post-operative pain. We start interarticular green humeral arthroscopy uh, to deal with any interarticular pathology. The first step is to localize the calcified area. We use a 20 gauge spinal needle or whiteboard needle to localize the area of calcific deposits in the infraspinatus. And once a chalky white material is seen at the tip, the scope is shifted to the subacromial space. We keep the needle uh, at its place, then we shift the scope to the subacromial space to start the subacromial persectomy. The second step is to excise the calcified area. We remove all the inflamed tissue. We, influ we remove uh, all the posterior bursa. We release uh, all the calcific uh, area uh, of the, of the infraspinatus. The calcification may resemble toothpaste or shock dust. Uh, it's very important to remove all uh, the calcified area within the tendon, even if we will have a large defect. Another technique, we may use a scalpel, blade number 11, uh, to create a partial tear in the, so in the, in the infraspinatus along with its tendon fibers. Then we do tendon milking to remove uh, the calcified area. Most of the infraspinatus is fleshy and muscular, so we have uh, to take care about the posterior capsule to keep it intact to augment our repair of the infraspinatus defect. Also, we should take care to remove the calcium deposits, deposit in the uh, subdeltoid gutter between the infraspinatus and the deltoid, and we have to look from the lateral portal to remove all this because this may be the cause of post-operative pain. At the end, we will have this large defect. The third step is to close this defect. So we do a double margin, uh, double row technique. We put a medial anchor just behind uh, the articular cartilage and then using We do a double uh, row technique where the first ankle, the medial ankle, is uh, inserted just behind the articular surface. And uh, we use a single strand of each suture to pass to the remaining uh, infraspinatus tendon and the posterior capsule. And it is very important to hold the posterior capsule with the infraspinatus during the repair. And then the other two strands are passed through the supraspinatus. Here is a, a bird beak passing through the infraspinatus and the posterior capsule, taking one strand from each.
Then the bird beak is uh, used to uh, retrieve the sutures from the supraspinates. After that, we do a margin conversions using a two, uh, the two strands of the same suture color and to tie the tendon side to side uh, to have a good sealing of the defect. After that, we insert a lateral row to close the uh, lateral part of the defect using a transosseous equivalent repair. Most operatively, all the patients are, uh, are using the same approach, sling for six weeks, uh, passive range of motion for three weeks, then active assisted three weeks, then active external rotation started after six weeks. Our series, we have four patients, post-operative X-rays, there was no door deposits in the infraspinatus, post-operative MRI, no repairs after three months, and all patients regain full range of motion. So our technique in summary is to localize the area of calcification and excise it. Then we do a medial anchor and close it in a margin convergence pattern. Then we do a lateral anchor and close it in a suture bridge technique. Thank you.